All right, so <clears throat> this is a kind of a progress report on my uh, one of my latest projects. Um, my brother came up with the idea of well, he actually got the Commodore sixty four X. Um, he got the bare the shell shell the bare bones and uh, couldn't fit any of his own hardware in it. So he came up with the idea of mounting his hardware in a 1541 the floppy drive the original one and um, after a lot of work um, we managed to mount his hardware in a 1541 um, he's using a uh, mini ITX board the Pico power supply um, uh, an Intel 2400 S I believe. Um, I'm using the 2400 and 5S, which uses the it's the exact same clock speed except for it has the Intel 3000 graphics, which is supposed to give a little bit of a boost. <clears throat> but anyway, this is um, this is uh, uh, well, it's still a work in progress um, at this point. Um, but basically, this is what we got right here. Um, we've got it. Um, put in the same basic shape and form. Mine has a little bit better of a color because mine was one that hadn't been sitting on the sun. Um, we still have the hard drive light connected here and the power light here. We still have the slot load DVD player. Which um, still works. Well, this is a completely different one, so it's not still works. It's another one we've done. Um, but, um, let's see here. Then we can, so we got, we've got a working slot loading uh, DVD burner in the front. Um, I, I opted for the DVD burner instead of a Blu ray because I don't want to pay the $140 for the Blu ray. And then in the back, we did a little bit better of a job getting this back panel clean. Um, we got our board measured out a lot better on this one. So we've got a lot cleaner of this cut on the bottom. There's still some stuff down here that needs to be exacto knife off. Try and clean it up a little more. And of course there's still the serial um, connector holes here. Um, and you got the, we moved the power button on mine because my brother actually got it wrong. He thought the power button was normally on this side. It was actually right here. And I wanted to put the power cable and the power button on the same side um, because I was hoping to put a video card in this thing. And um, I've measured it out. And the, the height that I've mounted my motherboard at, I can mount a video card right here. And the only problem is, is the heat sink literally rests against this. So the only solution would be to bore a hole in the side of this case to try and mount or um, give it the fan the ability to actually pull in cold air. Um, the thermals on this are actually relatively good, considering the fact this is a pretty enclosed case. Um, the CPU cooler actually is sitting right here, and it actually pulls air in from outside the case. The only real problem you have is getting the warm air out of the case. And I was going to put a drill hole on the other side and do the same, and put a fan that exhausts on the other side. However, I'm leaning towards mounting a fan on the top over here to exhaust the hot air out on the other side of the CPU. Um, you still got your Pico power supply right here, um, venting, which would help to pull air across it. Um, my brother actually put a fan on the bottom, um, and he raised it up by putting some bookshelves under it, which kind of helped, but he was blowing air in from the bottom, which it actually helped a lot once he wrote, raised it up. But anyway, um, this is kind of the where we're sitting at right now with the build. Um, I still haven't tested the video card to see if the Pico power supply has enough power to run it. Um, I got a uh, got a PNY um, 520. Um, it's not that much of a boost. It's like two or three times um, more powerful than the um, the integrated card. But um, I mean, it's not like I've really bought this thing for playing games, but there's a couple things I like to roll run on it, like Minecraft and other stuff, that can run on the integrated card, but it doesn't run very well. So I 
that's why I picked a low end video card because I just wanted something a little bit extra. Um, it does increase the heat that's going to be in the case. It does cause the computer to use more power, but um, it was something I wanted to do because I kind of wanted that little extra graphics performance boost when I'm using it. But anyway, this is um, where my Commodore um, 1541 mod is at right now. Um, it's still not done. I'm still trying to decide if I want to put this hole in for the video card or not because we found a ribbon but to move it, but the problem is, is the only places to put the video card are right on top of the CPU, which means it can't cool itself. And not to mention the ribbon would be going right over a fan, which would cause massive interference. Or we can mount it under the board. The problem is we have to lift the board and we've already drummled out this hole. So we'd have to leave this big gap down here. And the other problem with that is the direction it would mount would be the CPU or the cooling fan would be pointed up under the motherboard, so it wouldn't have any room to get air because it needed to be mounted upside down in that case so that it can pull air from the bottom case and we could just jack it up like my brother did. So we're exploring a couple different options and trying to figure out how we want to mount the video card or if I even want to bother mounting the video card because it's kind of hard drilling a hole in the side of such a beautiful case. The Dremelin in the back is really pretty clean. Uh, my brother did an amazing job on mine um, getting it all measured out before we started. So. Basically, that's kind of where my Commodore is sitting at right now. Um, I know I've said that about four or five times. But um, this this here, the, this front bracket is still held in the same way um, with hot glue. Um, we got it glued on a little bit better this time. Um, we finally got um, a solution for mounting um, bolts in here because we had to cut the bottom um, section that holds the bolt out and there was a sunken in piece because the bolt actually rests about right about here because it has this mounting piece that comes down but you have this piece that slides uh, this cone that comes in where the screw goes in on the bottom on both sides there and we cut those out so we could fit the motherboard back far enough so that the IO plate was actually sticking out so um, that mounting, we've got that mounting solution figured out. Um, I've got a couple pictures of this, the building process, and kind of, well, not exactly the building process, but the parts involved in trying to get this thing um, rebuilt. We've actually decided to try and use the original um, metal plate in here and dremeled it down so that we can mount um, the CD drive and the hard drive tray thingy on that so it was a lot easier to get out. So it's two bolt or it's four screws on each side to pull out the tray which has a CD drive which is already at the right height so we don't have to fight with that because it was a pain in the butt because you had to put a bolt on the bottom on my brothers and you had to stick pliers in and try and get the bolt in between the CD drive and the bracket we were using to mount the CD which was really hard to do and this one we got to do it with outside the case instead of having to mount it straight to the bottom so it was a much better solution there's still holes drilled for the motherboard because um, it would be too high with that metal plate in the way, so the metal plate only goes part of the way up to the motherboard. So anyway, there's some pictures on the Flickr of this project. Um, this is work in progress. Um, still haven't quite finished it yet, but it's this point where it's it's in the case, it's working at this point, so it's uh, pretty far along. <laughs>